For Complex News, I'm Natasha Martinez. It's no secret that the music industry looks a lot different in 2019 than it did 10 or even five years ago. The days of figuring out if you had a hit record by playing small venues, meeting with label executives, or waiting for that big break are a thing of the past. Today, it's all about data. Numbers rule the music industry more than most casual listeners realize. When you break down just how significant of a role data plays into what tracks make it on specific playlists or what artists are promoted over another, it's clear just how much new technologies are shaping what music we listen to on a daily basis. It's not all mastermind puppeteering though. Data helps clear out the masses and it helps bring talented artists to the forefront a lot quicker than it would a decade ago. Love it or hate it, Data has helped bring us hit makers and superstars such as Trippy Red, Lil Nas X, Logic, and more. So how exactly are trends being read by those behind the numbers? How do they know who the next viral star is? Well, the answer is that there are many factors to take into consideration. Shav Garg, the co-founder of IndieFi, calls his company a music data platform. He told Complex that music professionals use the site to figure out who the next hot artists are by bringing their data to the forefront. IndieFi has become a go-to place for people looking to identify artists who already have high engagement on social media. This allows them to use data to predict tomorrow's stars. One artist who was identified early based on data was Khalid. IndieFi first featured him in the fall of 2015, long before his debut album. Since then, he's had singles go quadruple platinum, an album that went number one, and five Grammy nominations. Garg's secret to placing bets on artists relies on cross-platform growth. He looks for consistent growing follower accounts across Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify as the key to gauging an artist's ability to make tidal waves in a sea of oversaturated media. The numbers can also dictate exactly where attention needs to be placed. For example, if a specific artist's fan demographic is more concentrated on Spotify versus Apple Music, the label needs to make a decision to either continue to put their efforts into Spotify or place money into helping the artist succeed on Apple Music. Music data companies are seeing success by analyzing streaming service data to come up with more effective ways to promote an artist. Jacob Fowler, SVP of engineering and product at a data company called The Orchard, tells Complex. Information from streaming services is anonymized, but artists, labels, and distributors can still find valuable insights. We can go down to the level of if something's really trending in Europe, we see it trending in Germany, but more specifically, it's trending in Berlin. The numbers don't lie, and it's become a surgical tactic for labels to curate an artist specifically to the needs of their audience. But at what point are the fans driving the ship entirely? Or is the idea of the fans being in control even a problem? Take social media challenges for example. An obvious way for labels to boost up their streaming numbers is for a challenge to be attached to a song. We've seen it time and time again because the formula works. An attached challenge increases attention, which leads to increased streams and more money, which benefits everyone involved. But how can a song go viral in the first place? The secret is getting the song and the concept in the right hands, like the hands of college senior Devin Dula Romani. Devin manages viral video makers primarily on TikTok, which is the platform responsible for Lil Nas X's rise to fame. Devin gets approached by record labels and artists who pay him to use their songs and his clients' content. They either ask him to boost their traction or create a viral sensation out of scratch. His biggest success to date is a lyric prank video using Russ's track Civil War. Devin started the campaign that ended up spawning 340,000 videos made on TikTok, with the challenge then spreading to Instagram and Twitter. The song, which was already a month old, went from 20 million streams to 48 million. So what's the problem there? Nothing really. Artists get their numbers up, the fans have fun with the music, and everyone gets bags, which is kind of the point. But does data take away creativity? Not according to Milo Stokes, who was very influential in Trippy Red's success. He's known by many as his manager, although he prefers the term partner. Stokes discovered Trippy when he only had 9,000 social media followers, a lot less of a number compared to his now 7.8 million and counting. Stokes loved Trippy's look and sound and used other artists on YouTube like Thames Dex and Cole Bennett, who were tapped into the audience he wanted to capture to help Trippy get off the ground. Stokes believes that there is creativity in looking at the data, although he admitted it sounds like the opposite. He says, 
You can see analytics, but if you have a perspective or if you're really asking questions as you're looking, you can see patterns and movements of audiences and how consumers are behaving. It's about being creative and crafty on how you can be a part of that stream and get in that mix with your content. Still, no matter which way you look at it, there are dangers in having data determine what artists or songs get boosts of attention. That's why experts urge that it's important to only have data enter the equation after the music is made. If data and trends end up shaping the music itself, we get closer to having artists becoming carbon copies of each other, which some may argue is already happening. Gerard Rice, a commerce manager at Sony Music Entertainment, told Complex that he believes the line between waiting for music to be made and using data at the infancy stages has already been crossed. He thinks the next trend in data is measuring the song analytically. This would mean analyzing which songs and sounds end up on specific playlists and why certain songs are liked by different fans, and then using that information to create new songs that are specifically catered to check those boxes and please a specific audience. I feel like that's going to be the thing in the next few years, if it's not already. I feel like people will start to use that information to try to craft songs. Definitely not all artists will do that, but I could imagine that happening. So what are your thoughts? Do you like data-tailored music, or did you like finding an artist the old-fashioned way? Sound off in the comment section below, and for more news, keep it locked to Complex on YouTube. For Complex News, I'm Natasha Martinez.